Welcome to Measure Theory Class 6, Probability Theory Part 2. Part 2 is on conditional probability and independence. So what about the probability of an event given the occurrence of another event? What I mean to say is, given that we state some other event is guaranteed. So if A and B are events in the event set, then the probability of A given B is written like this. And it is derived by taking the probability of the intersection of A and B. And remember that the event set is a sigma algebra. If sets A and B are elements of the event set, then the intersection of sets A and B are also in the event set. And if the intersection of two sets is in the event set, then the probability measure can be applied to that intersection. So the conditional probability is derived by taking the probability of the intersection of A and B and dividing by the probability of the event B. Also, conditional probability can also be written this way. Before calculating the conditional probability, there are some conditions to follow. The denominator cannot be zero, so the probability of B cannot be zero. And the probability is also positive, which is a condition of being a measure. The intersection should be non-negative. It can be zero, and it will be zero for disjoint sets. As we mentioned before, since the sets A and B are in the event set, then the intersection of A and B is also an element in the event set. The intersection of A and B cannot be larger than either A or B because the intersection is a subset of A and a subset of B. It could even be all of A and all of B, but it will not be larger than either. So the probability measure of the intersection will also be smaller than or equal to the probability measure of either A or B. Let's go back to the assisted living facility and ask, what is the probability of getting a first floor dweller given that you get a lavender? So it is given that you have a lavender. What is the probability that you will get a first floor dweller? The probability of getting a first floor dweller given that you get a lavender is the probability to measure on the intersection of the set first floor and the set lavender divided by the probability measure on the set lavender. Remember that there were 15 total residents and each resident had an equal probability of being sampled. Two of the residents are in the intersection and four of the residents are lavender and you end up with the probability measure of getting a first floor dweller given that you have a lavender is a half. On the flip side, what if you want what if you know you're going to get somebody from the first floor and you want to know the probability of getting a lavender? So the question is, what is the probability of getting a lavender given that you get a first floor dweller? The answer changes because the denominator changes, but the numerator remains the same. This time, the denominator is the probability of being a first floor dweller, which is the conditional part and the answer is two-fifths. Now let's go to the psychiatric facility. What is the probability of getting a first floor dweller given you get a forward patient, one of those talkative types? You are guaranteed to get a forward patient. What is the probability that they will live on the first floor? For the psychiatric facility, remember that there were also 15 total residents, but each patient did not have an equal probability of being sampled. Some patients had a zero probability of being sampled. Some patients had one-fifth probability of being sampled. Others had one-fifteenth probability. And still others had one-thirtieth probability of being sampled. In this case, the intersection between lavender and first floor dweller is one patient with one-fifth probability of being sampled. And the conditional set, which is the set of forward patients, 
contains three patients, each with one-fifth probability. So the numerator is one-fifth, and the denominator is three-fifths, and the result is one-third. The probability of getting a first-floor dweller, given you get a forward, talkative patient, is one-third. In a psychiatric facility, what is the probability of getting a forward, talkative patient given you get a first floor dweller? This is flipping it again. This time you're guaranteed to get a first floor dweller. In a psychiatric facility where each patient does not have an equal probability of being sampled, the intersection between lavender and first floor dweller is still one patient with one fifth probability of being sampled and the conditional set, which is a set of first floor patients containing five patients, each with various probabilities that sum to one-third. So the numerator is one-fifth and the denominator is one-third, which we can rewrite as three-fifteenths and five-fifteenths, and the result is three-fifths. Now let's look at an outcome set. Here it is with all of its elements. And suppose you create a sigma algebra based on segmenting this outcome set on women and men. What would your sigma algebra look like? You would have the whole outcome set, the null set, the set women, and the set men. Any other union or complement is already there. The complement for women is men. It's there. The union of women and men is the outcome set. It's there. If you have a sig so if you have a sigma algebra with only the outcome set, the null set, women and men, then the probability of A with respect to women should be either zero or one. It would be one if A were the set women or the outcome set. It would be zero if A were the set men or null set. But this is just simply not very interesting. You can only assign probability to events in the sigma algebra. Thus, the setup of the event set is very important. The more subsets that the sigma algebra is constructed from, the more information can be gleaned, and therefore, the more questions that you can ask and answer. So, this, so if this is the outcome set, and it's further divided by young and old, then your sigma algebra can have many more sets. Men, women, a set young, a set old, a set young men, a set young women, old men and old women, a set containing young men and old women, a set containing young women and old men, and several others. Of course, the outcome set and the null set are also in there. So you see, the more subsets in the sigma algebra, the more information you get. We get even more information if we divided this set further by healthy and unhealthy, insured and uninsured. So here you have two probability spaces. The outcome set is the same, and the event set is the same between the two probability spaces. The only difference between these two is one of them contains a conditional probability measure. It is a probability measure conditional on B. Now say you have two elements or events in the event set. Let's call these two events A and B. Since the event set is the same in each of these probability spaces, then the two events will be in both event sets. If the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, then A and B are independent elements in the event set. As well, if the probability of B is equal to the probability of B given A, then A and B are independent elements in the event set. So this is the definition of independence. If these conditions are not true, then the two elements are not independent. So remember ACME and Boyle's Dermatology Clinic? They picked up a few more patients. Here are their 16 patients. This is the clinic's outcome set. These 12 patients have acne and these four patients have boils. 
Are the two sets, Acne and Boils, independent? What do you need to ask to answer this question? You need to know the probability of set acne, which is 3 fourths. You also need to know the probability of set acne given boils, which is 0. Since there is no overlap between the sets acne and boils, the numerator of the conditional probability, which is the probability of the set that is the intersection of acne and boils, is 0. So the probability of acne given boils is 0. These are not the same answers. The probability of acne does not equal the probability of acne given boils. So acne and boils are not dependent, are not independent. Let's look at the sets women and boils. Are the sets women and boils independent? Well, the probability of set women is half, and the probability of women given boils is also half because the intersection of women and boils is 2 out of 16, and the probability of boils is 4 out of 16, and 2 divided by 4 gives you a half. So these two probabilities are equal, and that means the sets women and boils are independent. Are the set silver-haired and the set acne independent? Here the probability of set silver hair is 1 8th, since there are two silver haired people out of 16. And the probability of silver haired given acne is 1 12th. So the probabilities are not equivalent and these two sets are not independent. This slide shows different ways of representing how to determine independence. So this is the equality we just went over that indicates independence. Now the right side of the equality can be broken down into the equation for conditional probability. Taking this equality, we can rewrite it like this. This is useful depending on the information available to us. So that's it for conditional um, probability and independence. Our next video will be on product spaces and feel free to leave any of your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you.